What's up YouTube? It has now been a full year since I bought my KTM RC390 and I figured I'd do a little bit of a one year review or a long term ride report. When I bought this bike originally, I had some doubts about the reliability because there was a lot of people online saying that they were unreliable bikes, that they're prone to overheating and prone to having head gasket failures, but I have not yet had a single fault on this bike. Maybe I got lucky, maybe I got one of the good ones, but I sincerely doubt that because I have used and abused this bike to what I would like to say is its fullest extent. In the past year, I've put 3,500 miles on it, and 90% of those miles were on the track. Me beating the crap out of it, downshifting three gears into turns, bouncing it off the rev limiter, crashing it once, and running it until it gets really hot in 100 degree Texas track days. So I know some of you may say, well, shift love, this isn't really a KTM RC390 anymore because you've changed so much about the original bike that it just cannot be considered for long-term reliability because of some of these mods you've made. Well, I'll tell you that, if anything, a few of the mods I've made may make reliability suffer because I did put the MIVV Ghibli exhaust on it, a K&N air filter, and I had the ECU reflashed to the RC Cup map. there is one mod that I did actually do that will help reliability. I did change out the factory fan to a small fan. Um, I was reading reports online that the factory fan is prone to failure and actually may inhibit airflow through the radiator. So that is one of the first mods I made and I'm happy to say that I have not have any kind of overheating issue. I know that there's a lot of people saying that the early RC390s were blowing head gaskets and overheating a lot. But that has not been the case with this bike. So if we want to go down the list of mods that I've made to this bike, let's start with the most important ones. Suspension. I did the K-Tech forks and an Olin's KT303 shock on the rear. I also upgraded the brakes. My front brake rotor is the Galfer 320mm rotor and I used the EBC double H centered pads in the front as well and the stopping power could not be any more ridiculous and awesome. As far as weight reduction goes, I've got the Taiga upper triple, the Taiga clip-ons, the Taiga rear sets, the Taiga front cowling, the Taiga belly pan, and the Taiga seat cowl. All of those parts are made by Taiga and they're all pretty awesome. However, they did shave a ton of weight off this bike and made it even more fun at the track. And of course, I already mentioned the exhaust, the filter, the remap, and the small fan. Moving on from there, I've done two oil changes on this bike, and I do have some results from that. I do have to say that the KTM recommended 50W50 oil by Motul is the way to go. Usually I use Rotella T, either the 5W40 or the 15W40, but clutchless shifting this bike at the track did cause some problems with the lighter weight oil, so I did switch to the correct oil weight and that alleviated all my problems. So if you're going to do anything, if there's going to be any kind of oil discussion about this bike, stick with the 15W50 Motul oil. It is the way to go. And I do also have some mods that I would like to do in the future, like a lightweight battery, maybe finally fix my, my bent clutch lever from crashing at that one time at Motorsport Ranch Crescent, and maybe a couple other things to lose a little bit more weight. And lastly, as far as modifications or perhaps maintenance items, I have been running the Dunlop Alpha 13 tires for quite some time now. They've got numerous track days on them and I don't know how many street miles and they are grippy and long lasting. Definitely a value for the money. However, I was just talking to Dunlop the other day whenever they announced their Sportmax Q4 tire and they're saying that the Q3 Plus is now the way to go for the lightweight bikes. All modifications aside, I definitely enjoyed owning this bike over the past year. It has been reliable, fun, and economical for me. It wasn't nearly as expensive to build as a bigger sport bike. It sips gas, and the tires are also incredibly cheap as compared to buying a 120 front and a 180 rear. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're looking to get into track riding, or even if you're looking to buy your first sport bike, the RC390 is a great option. Yes, there is now the Kawasaki Ninja 400, 
And as we have all seen in World Superbike and Moto America, the Cowie 400 is doing great. Also, everybody really loves the R3. Now don't get me wrong, I've only ridden one a couple times and the motor feels really nice, but Yamaha just really isn't my thing. However, all in all, I've really enjoyed owning this bike. It's been great for me on the track, great for me on the street, great to commute on, and it would serve you well as your first track bike or first sport bike. Mainly because it is very economical to own, and it will teach you a lot about how to be fast. Lightweight bikes, in my opinion, are the best way to do that. As always, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. And if you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this from me in the future. And as always, do not forget to have a nice day.